subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, uh, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. I want to bring up the chart of the RMB, the Chinese yuan. And you'll notice here this goes back over the last four decades. Uh, for many years there during this time here, but in the 90s through this area here, when I was traveling to China quite a bit, it was always between eight and a half and eight. And we got all the way down here to six, as you can see. And now we've broken above seven today, folks. A uh, very, very strong move in the dollar. In other words, the dollar is strengthening against the Japanese yen. Let's try it again, Larry, the Chinese yuan. So it is breaking, uh, you know, it's getting ready. Well, it is breaking out. That's basically it. That's one of the charts that I want to cover. Then we'll cover some of the things that I know something about, and that is the short-term stuff. And we'll get up here. And now what we're going to do here is we're going to look at the yield spread. That uh, something we haven't seen in a uh, hundred years, folks. Let me get this up here. They announced today on Bloomberg that we have a situation going on where the two-year is yielding more than the 30-year. Folks, the last time this happened was 1896. And, uh, but this is important, too, possibly. That I don't know. The reason why this is important is because we posted this a few weeks ago, and this is from Stansbury's research. And we'll get this up here. And this is why the bond market is in so much trouble. And let me get this chart up here to take a look at it. And you'll see here is the one that says this is going back for uh, the last 40 years. You can see here, this is a crash of 87. A, B, C, D measures absolutely perfectly in price and time, folks. If Bernan Benoit Mandelbrot was still alive, he would focus this on the first page of his book because it's absolutely perfect. Now, the price objective on this, as you can see, has been marked down here right around, probably never get there, but this is the S&P 500 down to about 800 is what it's looking at here, if this is uh, correct. But, you know, this is just a wild, wild forecast. You know, who knows what it's going to be with that. But we have wild markets. That's absolutely for sure. You have the market, the Dow Jones swinging 300 up, 300 down the last three days in a row. And uh, that, that is uh, a sign that the people are they're rocking and rolling, as they say, in the trade. All right. Now, let's get on to some of the short-term things. The main one that we focus on today, folks, this is a four-hour chart on our one of our favorite things here. And that is the gold market. And you'll notice we get this down here. Get it up here. There's our ABCD pattern in here, folks. It measured to um, 1666. The low today so far has been 1668.70. That is nothing more than an ABCD pattern, folks, on a long-term chart going back over the last six weeks. Now, let's go back today to see since what we like to do is to quantify our risk so that we don't have to risk very much. So what we're going to do here is we're going to come back here and take a quick look at something over the last couple days. This is the last two. This is what I do every day. So... It's a, it's a way of, uh, you know, making money. Some days you're selling bacon, some, day, some days you're buying eggs. But here is the first big down move we had right after the Fed. Bada bing, bada boom. And then we had the one today. Look at this, folks. This whole section of consolidation, the high there to the high here was exactly 382. And it's broken $50 from that level. That is a big move for an intraday trading. I like to see those every day. Will you get it all? Heck no. But these are the kind of things that I'm going to be talking about when we do our the last one of the year uh, for the uh, online trading, uh, what do they call it, the Fibonacci 24-7 live trading for five hours. 
And so we'll see uh, what's going to be uh, happening here. Okay, now let's remind ourselves that whenever, whenever you prepare yourself for the day, you prepare yourself to the best of your ability and what you think are going to be the best trades based on what you do best. And what we try to focus on, to keep it simple, is to use A, B equals C, D. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a couple of these today just to show you that, by golly, you know, maybe these things actually do work. I show these things every day. Do I, do I trade them every day? No, of course I don't trade them every day. But I try to find them on most days, and that's what I'm looking for is to find those. Those are the ones that give you the best. So here's one, another one that I think you'll enjoy. Let's move up here, and uh, we'll get up here to the wheat market. And it's had one heck of a move today. Hold on one second here. Our guest today is none other than the Shane man himself, wolftrader.com. And move this up here. And there you go. Okay, there you go. Here's where we are. Uh, there we go. Seven, eight. Look at this. Perfect 61% retracement on a fast tick and bada bing, bada boom. Down there, 20 some cents lower, which is uh, you're risking six to make 20. And that's what you're trying to do. Regarding Chains Mullion, folks, I met him, oh, six, seven years ago, I believe, at least that long ago. Yeah, at least, oh, wait, Jackson is nine, so been more than nine years. But uh, I have several things on my bucket list that I always wanted to do. One, I'd like to see an alien ship land on the White House and say, yeah, we're for real. You're, you're not here alone. And the second one is I'd like to have a section on the uh, CNBC or Bloomberg saying that, look, astrocycles don't work all the time, but they do work when they work pretty good. And Mr. Shane Smolian is well on his way of proving it. For the last six months, managed money, real money, serious money. He's done 5% a month, folks. That, that You can't get that at the Bank of America. You might soon, but uh, not right now. Anyway, that's what we're looking at right here. <clears throat> the year of the snake, 2011. Was that right, uh, Shane, man? I think that was two thousand. Might have been two thousand and had to be two thousand and eleven. That's when it had to be. Uh, I'll have to I'll have to get the answer for that. But I believe it's uh, two thousand and eleven is what I think there was the year of the snake. But I, I was born. It has to be because I was born. Yeah, forty one has to be the year of the snake. So that was two thousand and eleven. Okay, let's move on to a couple other ones that I wanted to look at. Since we like the wheat and wheat is pretty crazy, but look at this, folks. If you like ABCD, and if you like ABCD, and we like ABCD, I want you to take a look here at the old yellow corn maze itself. Look at this, folks. There's your low. There's your high, ABCD, right up to the high. It was 2013. That's the year of the snake. Okay. Thank you very much. Anyway, and you can see here, folks, we dropped almost 18 cents in a matter of a few hours. And so... Uh, that's what we're going to be looking for is finding these little ABCDs, the little things that try to help us along the way. And that's the thing that, you know, get us to the promised land. Not every day, but most of the times it's uh, pretty much spot on. Someone's asked a question about what it means with the Chinese one and the RMB. I don't know. I'm just looking at the chart, folks, and the people are talking about it. That's all I'm watching. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold vista gold's flagship asset is the mount todd gold project in the northern territory of australia this is australia's largest undeveloped gold project we are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district this is a large-scale low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this, combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits, this distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio Tom O'Brien is here to help Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years a frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you Tom's daily market newsletter market insights is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Okay, folks, I've been asked to take a look at that Goldman Sachs trade we were looking at here the other day when we were trading up there at 344. Basically, folks, that is a 135 pattern. That means it has three higher bottoms or three lower tops. It is not a three drive to a top pattern or three drive to a bottom pattern. This is two lower highs or two higher lows. And they have to be pretty symmetrical within a few days, okay? And the other thing that they have to do is they've got to be pretty much spot on to the old Fibonacci ratios. And as you can see on this one here, we're looking at a double ratios of 618 and 786. And of course, the way the action's moving today, they'll probably take that high out today at uh, 444. But uh, that's the way trading goes, boys and girls. It's uh, pretty, pretty crazy. Today, just in the Dow Jones, folks, we were down 250, up 250, down 300, and up 300. That's today. But that, 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 that encompasses almost the whole thing that we had uh, on um, uh, Tuesday, I think it was, when we had the, uh, the big down move from the Fed. You know, that was 1,300 points. And the 382 on that comes in you know, way up there. It's around 13.7 or something like that, or 31,700, something like that. And on the S&P, it's uh, 410 or something like that, which we might be there before this show is over. But we'll have to you know, do one thing at a time. But we're having incredible volatility, which is exactly what you like to see if you're a pattern recognition swing trader. It's extremely important to see stuff like this. Okay, now, I wanted to cover a couple other charts that I think are relatively important. And that is, a question arose about the fact about Larry Williams and the prediction that he made. And I've had three emails on this, so evidently, uh, there's some confusion because I sent the video out in it, and then I also sent the chart that he was talking about. So what was Larry was talking about was to see a move down in the stock market on the day of September 12th. Well, we got that from Larry Williams. We got that from Norm Winsky. We got that from uh, Stan Harley. And But Larry Williams, what he said in this was a two-day trade, but he said also in the video, the worst day coming is going to be September the 17th. And I can tell you with 100% accuracy, 
that there is going to be virtually no trading. It's going to be so bad on the 17th that you're not even be able to get orders filled. That's how bad it's going to be. And you know why that is? It's Saturday. So something will probably either happen on the 16th <laughs> or it'll happen on the next day on Monday, which will be the 19th. So that's the main thing. The good part is we're having some of this great volatility and I'm going to be uh, trading on the 20th, which will be live trading right in the midst of all this stuff. We've got an equinox coming up. Uh, the fall starts on the 22nd, so we should have really great volatility, and we're going to be trying to make some money. We've done good on the other three. Hopefully, we'll do well on this one. We'll do one at a time. That's what we have to do. Okay, now let's get over across the pond over here. And by the way, the line, if those of you that are in the UK, the line has, uh, to see the queen has gone down from 4.4 miles to 4.37 miles. So they're still lining up uh, quite a bit to see the queen. And uh, it's, it's, really, uh, it's really quite amazing. Okay, now here is the German DAX. You can see we've been in a downtrend. We've had lower tops in here. This is a daily, so it looks pretty much like what we're looking at here. The $64 question is, do we break to the upside or do we pull down? This we have to wait and see. There's no question about that. Okay, now let's move on and go across the pond again, and we're going to take a look at the FTSE because the FTSE is totally different, and as it should be because – they've been under greater pressure than the German market has. So hold on and get up here. And there's the FTSE. And you can see we had the big move down. And then we had the night. There's a perfect three drive, a one, three, five pattern, folks. There's a one, a three, and a five. That's what Alan's showing here. It's a one, three, five. That gives it a profit objective up into here. But this is what you're watching right now. And this is a, a smaller time frame chart. But it's still a valid pattern, and that's uh, what we're paying attention to. So just want to keep that in mind as we're looking at some of these things right here. My beepers are going off. That must mean we're making new highs and everything pretty close here in the Dow Jones. We are only, we are only, uh, see, we're only 20 points away from a, from a new high on the day. But the number you want to watch, folks, is the high that we made on the day uh, before the big, when the big crash came down. And that, that number comes in at 31,393. Pay attention to that one. That's going to be a real interesting one to watch. And as we're speaking here, oh, my goodness, this is one that I'm going to have to, oh, dear. I don't get excited about this very often, but by golly, we're going to do it. We're going to draw the old A, B, C, D here in this, and we're going to see if we're going to be right because, we are only about a hundred, yeah, just about a hundred pips away, hundred hundred points away. There it is. By golly, let's get her up here. This is a freebie, boys and girls. Hold on one second here, and we will take a quick look at this. All right, get this up here. This might not work, but you give me ten of these, I'll win on nine. Oh no, maybe seven. <laughs> okay, here's where we are, folks. There's the low that we made here yes, uh, yesterday. Yesterday. Uh, there's the, the one right after that. You see that right there? This is the one at 990. Okay, now the ABCD measures 100 points from where we are right now. That's an ABCD. Okay, folks, that is the first ABCD since Tuesday uh, that, has, this, that is perfect. All the others have been to the downside. In other words, we had ABCD. You can see ABCD right here, ABCD right here. But this is going to be our first one right up in here. So if this market is bearish, and I think it's got a tendency to be bearish, watch that. Because if we go, if we start getting higher than the 382 on this, folks, it's time for the old cowboy to act like uh, King Charles and turn in my Mount Block pen because it's starting to leak. And I don't want that to happen. So this is one that you got to pay attention to, folks. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but that's ABCD. The only thing you got to be afraid of here. Is it's this move here in the last 30 minutes has gone 300 points. Now, that's not easy to do, but this market has been today. We had 300 up, 300 down, and 300 up. That's a 900 point move. That's 75% of what we did on the downside on Tuesday, and the market's basically gone nowhere. So that's what we're watching here today. So we'll see if it's going to uh, mean anything, but we were sitting right there. And just about a half hour, 45 minutes ago, we were sitting right at the 78% level and uh, with the Dow down 110. 
And, uh, of course, some of these things have gotten killed as far as stocks like, uh, what the heck is it? Uh, uh, it starts with an A. Adobe. Adobe today got hit really, really bad. So that's it. I need to put my limit minders in here, folks. So bear with me a second. Then we got a break coming up, and then we got the Shane Man coming, and uh, we'll have some uh, good stuff for him. Uh, he, he's always got good stuff for sure. We'll be able to listen to what he has to tell us. But watch this number, folks 31,434. Uh, 31,478, somewhere in that area, 31,500 to 31,434 as a potential for being a very interesting spot to complete. And A, B equals C, D. Right back with the Wolf Trader, 877-927-6648. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we have as our guest today, the WolfTrader.com, Shane Smolian. Young man, how are you doing today? Good afternoon, Mr. Larry. How are you? Uh, still living the dream on the green side of the grass. How does it look today, buddy? We up, up and away, new highs for the year? Um, I, I, I don't think so. I think I have a, a little bit of a different perspective on the S&P. Well, tell us uh, what you're looking at. Okay, so I, I have a few summary slides here. I just kind of wanted to gather my thoughts for everybody. Uh, so this is really just kind of where we are right now. So the S&P continues in its bear market, uh, and this has been going on. I've been talking about this since not this July, but the previous July uh, when those Fed internals started plunging. This was right before the Afghanistan withdrawal. I was kind of telling everybody, hey, careful, careful, 
they're pulling back here. Uh, I, I still think there's a long way to go in this bear market. And this is uh, directly related to, you know, what's going on with the Fed. Everybody knows that the Fed is in a tightening phase. Uh, and so as long as this is continuing, it's going to continue to put pressure on the stocks. Uh, I used to look at a lot of technical analysis and astro indicators, but it wasn't really until about 2010, 2011, that I started understanding what was going on with this modern uh, banking that, that goes on here with the quantitative easing. And so when we get these tightening phases, it's very difficult for the market to hang on. And to give the market credit, it's, it's hung on pretty well. Uh, considering the amount of tightening that's going on. It's it's historic on multiple levels. Now, next week, we do have this Fed meeting on uh, 921, and they're saying that they may raise a full point. So uh, that's, that's coming, that's in the works. And we did see that in that Jackson Hole meeting, that was the first time when the Fed spoke in a long time that the market sold off on what they said. And I think that was by design. I mean, they're, they're more hawkish. And I think they need prices to come down. I mean, this is part of the inflation equation. It's it's a complex thing right now, but they definitely need prices lower. Uh, the biorhythm, this is our new forecasting tool that gives me a kind of a one-stop uh, deal for the forecast for the for the month. Uh, this is making a high on 921. So that goes right, right with the Fed meeting. And so I think it's really interesting that these two coincide. Uh, so I would watch that date. I think the market's trying to chop, chop, chop along here it's kind of limping along trying to get to that 921 date, but that's a that's a significant turn there right there. So uh, I think we're entering a triple down of the S&P gold and Bitcoin. I think that's important because that's going to help us measure the, the intensity of the next leg down. And then the one thing I would point out here, there's, typically there is an election rally in October. Uh, so we got to watch this. I, I kind of have that factored in that there's probably going to be some type of a pause or some type of a, a stall here. Uh, as the election approaches, although it is very bearish right now, I just wanted to bring that up. That that typically happens, and these seasonals happen typically mid to late September in October. So I wouldn't be surprised if at the end of this month into kind of the middle of October we do get a little bit of a pause here, and um, and uh, so don't be surprised if we get a little pause here. That does not mean the bear market is over by any means. Uh, then typically it you know rallies through the election, but I think probably this time it would top a little bit before the elections. Uh, it typically it keeps going, but you know this year could be different because uh, we have tightening in the Fed and we're in a bear market and we're and we're in a recession. If you look at the global slowdown, uh, the global economy is slowing down. It's confusing because of COVID and the workforce and people are coming back in, in at different times. But ultimately, uh, this is a more bearish situation that we've seen. Now, typically, gold, Bitcoin, and S&P in this recent COVID decline, they all went down together. Uh, and I show this chart a lot. I show the fact that this was COVID back here. You can see that uh, Bitcoin had the biggest decline. It had a 57% uh, decline. And then that was followed by uh, gold here. So this is, this, is, this is Bitcoin up here. This is gold right here. And then this is the S&P. So you can see they're different colors. So Bitcoin comes down. Gold comes down. S&P comes down. So I think we're going to see this again. I think they're all going to go down together. And then I think once uh, either gold or Bitcoin, probably Bitcoin bottoms first, I think that's when we'll have a clue that, you know, maybe the next leg down it, it, it is over. Uh, th this is a shot of what we have right now with S&P gold and Bitcoin. I think we're in this phase now. Uh, S&P was kind of rallying out there for a while. And then that geomagnetic storm came, turned that down. So now we have uh, all three of these in formation now. So here's your S&P, here's gold, and here's Bitcoin. So I think we're, we're set now. Uh, I, and again, we could have a pause with the election here, the election rally, so October pause. But then after that, I think heading down into Thanksgiving, early December, I think that's going to get really bearish uh, for these markets. And I think Bitcoin has a long way down to go, uh, a long way down. So that's that. So S&P intraday, I, I have talked about these new biorhythms that I've introduced here. Uh, I really like these. They're way more accurate than cycles. I have about a 10 times resolution advantage on any astro cycle that I have. Uh, but you can see here, I'm able to give these intraday movements. So during the inflation report here, you could see that overnight, this, this, thing, this thing had uh, topped and it was, uh, sorry, the inflation report here was coming down uh, into this inflation report here. And this, sorry, this was this should be over here. This was the inflation report. Uh, anyway, so you can see that the biorhythm did pick this up. That we were in a down downtrending 
intraday mode for that inflation report. So this is really helpful information to tell us what the tendencies are. What it's telling us right now is that today and Friday, the intraday biorhythms are relatively positive. So I think that the market's going to try to tread water, try to chop. We saw it selling off today. And then we just, like you just talked about on the show, it had that little burst up. I think it's going to chop, chop, try to hang on, try to hang on until we get to that 21st date. And then that's, that's, that could be some crazy, crazy selling that could come in. Uh, and again, the Jackson Hole was a clue because that's the first time the Fed really got hawkish. I mean, they usually try to, to, to you know, to try to soothe the markets and give some type of a uh, softening stance, but they didn't do that in Jackson Hole. And so my guess is they're going to do the same in their in their meetings. So what we usually see, we usually see these markets rally around the Fed in the meeting, but I think that might be changing because they really need these markets to start to start coming lower here. So. That's just kind of kind of what I see there. Now this is uh, another intraday chart here. Now I call these I've called these the poop slinging rallies because people are just kind of you know like when you go to the zoo the monkeys love to sling poop everywhere, and so that's just in in my mind the poop slinging rallies is just people just hoping for anything, and just kind of throwing something up there and hoping for the bear market to be over. But we can see here that these declines come very very rapidly in the bear market. And they're very, they're kind of unexpected. I mean, it catches people off guard. Even though we're in a bear market, when we had this whole rally here, uh, a lot of people turned bullish and they were emailing me and talking, hey, is it different this time? Is the Fed use different? And I said, no, it's not different. There's nothing different. We're still in a bear market. Uh, nothing has changed. And, and I'm, I was really surprised at the amount of people that got pulled into this. Uh, really seasoned traders were writing me and I just said, you know, guys, I'm following the data. I have a very strict data model that I follow and this is straight down still. Uh, and then of course we got the new decline here. Now at this high here, we had a full moon perigee, which is a really good topping signal. Now that took a few days to come over, but then we have this G3 geomagnetic storm. And when that storm came off the sun, it was a series of them. So it was like one, two, three came in these waves. That's the same type of event that ended the March rally, and so that ended this rally. So I've been telling people, look, we're in this phase now. Uh, we had this run up here, which I'll, I'll talk about in a minute. Then it comes back down on the inflation report. But if we get another G3 or G4 geomagnetic storm, I don't care if there's an election cycle or anything. This market's going – This it's bye-bye S&P. I don't think it can handle another one of these storms coming off the sun. So the last two, it turned. Hey, we have to take a break. We'll be right back with Shane Smolian, WolfTrader.net. We have our first question coming in from Eureka, California. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks. We had a question from Charles in Eureka, California. And the question is, Shane, how do you go about determining what the cycles are of a biorhythm? Are they the same like daily, hourly? That, that's, that's what his question is. That's a good question. So cycles are different than biorhythms because the, bi the biorhythms go on while you sleep, when the markets are closed. Uh, cycles typically – Whoa, whoa, like whoa, whoa. Markets never close. I'm, I'm a testament to that because I'm up 24-7, for God's sake. What do you mean they close? Well, <laughs> they, they close. So, so when you have a, bi a biorhythm, yeah. it's going to keep going. So a lot. So when you show cycles on the chart, they're not showing, you know, when the market's closed. And, and, and mm -hmm. so and when you take into account, you know, it's a kind of a mix between cycles and astrology because you're looking at dates, specific dates, start dates and things like that. But it, it, it's a, more of a continuous function, so I don't worry so much when you have market shutdowns and things because it's just it's always running. Okay, so is, it's it, it's tied to time, the it's a time cycle. It's a time cycle, but it's tied directly to to the symbol. Okay, so each one's going to have their own unique unique rhythm. So it's it's better it's a better than a cycle. The cycle the cycles can be, uh, you know I, I I'm. It's it's just it's different. The timing of it, the 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 fact that it's able to continuously run all the time. So I don't care if the markets are shut down for the holidays or not, and even if it's running on an hourly or minutely chart minute chart, it's going to pick right back up because that's the rhythm of that of that symbol. I don't need the chart to be running for it to work. Well, I hope that answered his question. So please continue, young man. <laughs> sure. Um, anyway, it's something I've been working on and. Um, yeah, so it's it's working very well, and I like it for the for the we can now actually forecast out actually I think better than the Astro way better. I can control the way that I optimize it, and I get I can get it dialed down much better. All right, so Nasdaq here uh, you can see here has been much weaker than the S and P. This this has this death cross way back into early part of the year. We've had some some bear market rallies here, but this is really looking bearish here, uh, as it should. Tech should lead the way down. Now. Speaking of biorhythms, the internal rhythm of the S&P is what's going on with the Fed. That's what controls this thing. Now, we had a really interesting phenomenon here. You can see this is the internals. Now, you can't see this whole chart, uh, but they are – they are um, the, the, the internals are decreasing across time. This has been going on since last, since last July. But – they can spike these things at times and on the short term. And you can see here this was starting to rise here. And I didn't really notice this until we got a few days into this little rally here. And they spiked this way, way up. And then the market gets this lift. And then an inflation report comes out. And wham, it comes right back down. And I was telling people this is not real. When this thing was rallying up, I was telling my subscribers this is not real. This was artificially manufactured here. Uh, this is this is has nothing to do with the S and P. So that you know, and they were getting excited again about a rally here. And I said, "There's nothing there, guys. There's nothing there." Uh, so anyway, these are still uh, weak here, and you can see these two peaks here. These are the geomagnetic storms here. Both of these storms uh, made the market hit a high, and I and again, I think if we get another geomagnetic storm coming out here, 
that that's the end. I mean, I, even if we get an, uh, an October rally or a pause here, or if it comes down and it looks like it's making a double bottom, I think if we get another geomagnetic storm, that's going to be the end of the market here. Now, this is a chart here of the, of the daily. I want you to look over here at these statistics. Uh, Monday, Tuesday are the two worst days of the week here. So we got to watch this because Bitcoin is on the move lower too. Uh, and so I think that risk is always there for Monday and Tuesday for dislocation. And then Wednesday, uh, here comes the Fed. This is, this is when the statistics get positive. Wednesday, Thursday get positive. But that biorhythm high is coming right in here, right around the 21st. So I think that that could be that could be an issue. This is a kind of a visual of that biorhythm here. Uh, and you can see that uh, it came in. It had a low at 9.8. Market ran up, came back on the inflation report. But this is the next one here, this 9.21 here uh, that's coming in. So uh, this is, this is uh, I think this is going to be our next focal point here for a sell-off. But again, guys, you have to have a lot of patience with this S&P. It's really stubborn to go down. And we do get these wild <laughs> rallies off the lows, and uh, it's just part of the game. So I always tell people, look, if you if you if you're doing a long term perspective, trade lighter because you have to be able to withstand these storms that happen. But we are starting to see the intensity and the frequency of this pick up, uh, as I showed in this in this intraday chart. I mean, this is getting more and more intense. And the other thing too that I I tell people, uh, look these. The markets are getting more and more unpredictable, you know, whatever it is, computer trading and all of these different, you know, things going on, especially in the bear market. It's very, very, very difficult to figure out when these big down moves are going to come. And they usually come when you don't expect them. So it's 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 just it's really difficult to time these big moves down. And so I tell people just, you know, don't try to outsmart this thing and think that you're going to pick that high because it's really difficult. Now, I know some of your you gave those uh, dates that some of your uh colleagues had forecasted this and you know and that's that's great uh you know maybe we can occasionally forecast these but what i'm saying is when you get these really big dislocations like this it can be unpredictable and it's just it's it's a tough sled to try to figure that out um all the time in terms of what's going on now if we if we look at the traditional bradley here i i, I always just kind of throw this in as, as kind of a backdrop but but again this does show a little bit of a lift here in october and then at the end of october getting weak here and then the elections are coming in here, and then a December low. I, I think that this is an area to watch here late November, early December. I think that's an area of interest, let's just say, uh, for the S&P. But again, we have to have a sense of humor. I always tell people you have to have a sense of humor with the S&P <laughs> because it's just like it's it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Like it's cra like these these rallies that you know, like we just saw intraday. I mean, it spikes. There's a lot of moving parts now in this market, and so. Uh, be patient with it. If you're long term, try to trade smaller. I, you know, you don't have to be like the movie The Big Short. I mean, people are always have this fantasy about shorting the market and you know making millions of dollars. And the reality of it is, it, it's tough sledding, uh, especially like I said with those rallies. So you know, smaller position sizes aren't that bad. I mean, if you're trying to make a thousand points, how how big of a position do you really need? I mean, I, I've been short on this since this uh, since December. But relatively small positions, and I just keep rolling over on my longer-term trades. Now, Bitcoin. Let me talk about Bitcoin real quick here, because I think Bitcoin uh, really holds the key here. This is a chart of the correlation between uh, the S&P 500 here and Bitcoin, and I really like these two because I think Bitcoin is going to drive the S&P lower here, and the correlation down here. You can see that when this little when this little yellow line gets above zero so i'm going to i'm going to draw here when this little yellow line gets above zero like this what that means is that they're moving together okay so when this correlation gets above zero what that means is they all they both start moving in the same direction when it gets below zero it means they're kind of moving in opposite directions so like right here uh, s&p was going up and bitcoin was kind of going down but you can see that in recent months they're moving together essentially and so i think i think when we look at this, this is a 20, this is a 20 moving average versus a 50. This is a 20. This is a 50 that Bitcoin has already started to has already headed back down here. And the S&P is just now crossing the 20 over the 50. I think they're all ready to start moving together in tandem. And again, I forecast this. And then the, the gold, you know, I think gold's in a bear market for a while. Uh, I think that could go on for years. I, I talked about that, too, um, in, in, in depth in one of your, in one of the presentations. But I think they're all going down. The question is, you know, once 
when what bottoms first i think it's probably going to be bitcoin it's probably going to go further than people think down before it bounces but uh it's not dead yet so god this is really good stuff hey we'll be right back folks shane spoiling wolftrader.com stay with us shane Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIVC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back, folks. And Shane, I have another question from one of our listeners. How did you get started into astrology, and how old were you when you started? Um... At, at a pretty young age, I think I was maybe around 10, reading books on it and discussions and with, wow. with different people about it. And I, I, I didn't really get into – I didn't – this is a good question. So until I started looking at Alfie Software and then Raymond Merriman also, he had a website where he was talking about every time Saturn went into a cardinal sign, the United States, the stock market would sell off. And I was like, wait a second. Is that true? Does the United States have a birth? I said, oh, damn, it's true. Every time the Saturn would go – you know the United States sign is Cancer. I was like, mm -hmm. damn, it's true. Every time it would go, it would go down. So then I started getting into the financial astrology. I found Alfie software, and so, you know, his software is really just top of the line in terms of. But you got to you got to get in there and, and do and do the research. So it's not just it's not like mm -hmm. laid out for you, but it's if if you know what you're looking for, it's really good. Yeah, that's really good. Listen, we'll have you on again soon. Thanks for joining us and continue doing the great work over there in Chicago. The people love you over there. So 
keep up the keep up the good work, pal. I mean, it's what seven. You're in eight months now, going on nine months, and that's pretty good. I think you're doing great. Listen, we'll Thank have you, you so on much. again soon. And as soon as you're wrong, you know, you're, it'll be your last day. But, you know, so far <laughs> you've been doing okay. <laughs> thanks, hey, Larry. Thanks for, thanks for joining us, buddy. Keep those videos of Action Jackson. I love watching the little guy. Basketball, doing baby. Basketball, basketball. basketball. Yeah. basketball. Yeah. yeah, what I don't understand is how did why does the why does the coach always let him finish first and do the best? Is that he's free range or some, what? Let me tell you something. He's fast and he's and he, he, he he's yes. even faster when he's not dribbling the ball, but he's he's yeah. fast. He's very good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, yeah. That's good. All right, yeah. pal. Listen, thanks for joining us. We'll have you on again soon. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude. Smoke tomorrow. We've got none other than Mr. Stan Harley on the show, and he has been very bearish also. So we'll see you tomorrow, folks, on the flip side, and may God bless. Mm -hmm.